is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here. Brings a video here today. I bring you guys another Photoshop tutorial how to create your own cool. We're gonna go with like esports or even like player sport design team kind of advertising post design, right? So I don't know why I said design team, but regardless, right? You guys understand we're doing these really cool, fun sport player like ads, right? You guys remember I used to do these a lot. I, some of my like most viewed videos happen to be these videos right here. And I can see why I know like, a lot of you guys love doing these kind of things. I see them all the time in portfolios and I do portfolio reviews. And then just like the ones I have just like are just so outdated for me. And I just feel like I need to just come in, just swoop in a little bit and I give it a nice little update. And I know how much you guys will appreciate this. So thank you guys very much for the support on the video. I already can tell we're just gonna, we're gonna, I got you. I got you. I know how much love we're gonna get. Anyway, so I went ahead and used LeBron James again as my example because one, it's very easy to find pictures of this guy. And with that being said, make sure that you guys, whenever you search for your picture, make sure when you search for it in Google, you want to go to tools, right? Drop down this tools option, go to larger than, go to larger than right here. And this little drop box here, or this little drop box, a little drag over here. Make sure you guys choose four megapixels and over larger than those amount of pixels. That way you get really, really nice, clean images right now. It's very small, but it's not actually a small image. When I open it up, as you can see, uh, it'll be a nice like really really nice higher quality image right then rather just searching it and kind of finding photos that happen to be like maybe like 1000 by 1000 which is way too small for what i'm thinking that you guys need it for so make sure you guys actually do that in the search options give you guys some really good pictures and with that being said i do have two pictures already here so this is of course the edited version this is what it looks like before right so it's, we're gonna make the whole skin tone really like really like almost dramatic in a way and then just give it a really dope atmosphere with a nice little logo right in the dead smack middle which would be really really cool for things like i guess fifa and stuff like that so i know how much you guys love it so uh yeah these are the two pictures i'm using here today i already penciled them out of course i'm not going to do that again in the video the pen tool is you know we have we all have our our days but this is not the funnest thing in the world the pen tool because you want it to make sure it doesn't look super scratchy so i think i did a pretty good job but these are two pictures that i chose of course right so these two images both share the same exact jersey i try to find that as well i try to find him two pictures with him like you know has his hands behind his side that way just the whole concept looks really good however if you guys can't find these kind of pictures maybe if it was like an esports team and you have like a group picture maybe in the background here you have them blurred out uh blurred out that way or not blurred out blacked out that way the way i have it his back turn right so whatever works for you guys whatever way you ch like choose to use this concept i hope you guys do enjoy the face video here today and yes it is late again because your boy just sometimes his time doesn't work um so yeah of course two likes on the video you guys secret down below and we're gonna get this thing going and if you guys want to i will put the images here that i have penciled out already um basically in the like description down below just in case we use the same exact one for an example so with that being said let's go ahead and get this thing going guys and i'll see you guys on the other side all right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing going here today. Now, just because I want to completely leave you guys in the dark when it comes to pen tooling a person out, make sure that you at least do not do this, right? And I know a lot of you guys do it. I see it all the time when I do portfolio reviews. I see a lot of people's pen tooling. You do not want to do things like this, all right? Do not do this. This doesn't make it any more easier. It just makes it a lot more choppy, and the end result is not going to be nowhere near as clear as you want it to be, right? So what I would tell you guys is no matter what, like zoom in right before it gets to that little pixely little screen here. So I'm using O in my scroll wheel. So you guys want to just get right to where it gets to that point where it's close enough so you can see this and not close enough where you can see pixels, right? Now, unless you really want to, of course, if you have to, of course, you should do so. However, when you get right to that point of that zoom, right around here you guys will see that there are very clear lines that you can follow and do very easy point to point sort of switches right so what i'm gonna of course suggest as well is that you guys use the mask tool so what I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just quickly just show you guys right so i'm gonna click once it's gonna start of course start the uh, starting point of the pen tool if i click again and drag we're gonna give her uh give ourselves two little extended points right little extended anchors that are gonna be right of course on the left and right or top bottom wherever the heck you guys have the point at and where you extended it from you're gonna have two other little points here right so you can of course always hold control on your computer and then or on your keyboard excuse me and then you can move the points very very freely very accurately as well so you can always get mostly every curve in the universe when it comes to any picture you can get that curve for sure right so this curve right here is pretty really easily followed now for this little curve right here i may we need to click over here right so when i click over here as you can see this little point right here also extends right here as well right so you're going to get a very weird odd like extended point right here now this is very frustrating if you guys know how to fix this right so what happens is all you have to do is hold alt on your computer I keep saying computer your keyboard and then when you hold alt and click one more time it actually gets rid of the extended point that's over on this side on uh, of course on the whatever the opposite side was and when i click over here again you're going to see it now starts off where you kind of want it to start at right now that little sharp angle here however is not exactly how his hand goes and it might look a little bit weird so i'm going to say to you guys as well is besides always using alt to make a new point of like interest of where it needs to start at you guys can also just drag in the point as well 
So if there was like a more of a lesser curve, which it kind of is right here, you guys can just click again. And now, as you can see, we got a nice, very smooth sort of transition into that curve, not such a point on it. And right there, just knowing that enough, I think is a very, very simple and very quick um, sort of like direction of how you use a pen tool if you guys are not incredibly, you know, used to it. Um, just take your time on it. And let's just say, for instance, let's just say I pen tooled all this, this entire arm. Let's just pretend, like, pretend I pen tooled everything around him, though. Let's just, like, right, I pen tooled his entire body. And I'm going to connect it really quickly. So I'm going to say, how do you actually use the actual mask tool when you're doing something at a pen tool? So what you're going to do is you're going to right click when you finish your path. You're going to choose make selection and you're going to press OK. You're going to press M on your keyboard. It's going to give you the rectangle marquee tool. And you want to right click, select the inverse, right? You can select the inverse because what you're going to do is you're going to basically select everything that's on the outside of this path right here. So everything that's inside this path here is what's going to be actually taking or no, not going to be taken out. So when you click on this mask here, your, uh, your little layer mask, you want to just use the black foreground color, which is going to be default. You're going to have a black foreground color and you're going to have a white background color. Make sure you guys have your black foreground color actually selected. So basically if it's white right here, that's not the way you should have it. You should have it so it's black in the front. And then you want to hold alt backspace and it'll quick fill in the black, which actually erases. And as you can see now, the stuff that's on the outside is going to be erased. So if any, like, I guess for any reason you have to go back, you can just use a white brush, like a white hardness brush. You can fill it back in, excuse me, a black brush to fill it back in just like so. Right. And then you can use a white to then erase it again. Right. Very, very simple. It just, it's very, very just cool. Right. So of course we're using the eraser as well, by the way, the white is actually how you erase and the black is then how you actually fill in as well. So just make sure you guys use that option. It just very, very clearly helps. Hopefully it helps you guys just that little bit. Cause I don't want to just leave you guys in the dark when it comes to pen tooling, Cause not everyone's the greatest and all that cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right. Okay, let's just, uh, yeah, I already have my positioning already set. So, of course, I have one picture behind him and then one picture in front of him, both using the same exact jerseys. It looks like it's almost the same exact day as well, which is really cool, but it obviously wasn't. What I ended up doing beforehand was also that you can see here, I use a smart filter and uh, balance, uh, excuse me, vibrance and levels for the smart filters when I choose the option to go to uh, image and uh, adjustments, right? So if you guys do not know what you can end up doing, right? I'll just do it for this picture right here for now because of course I wanted to fine tune the image to make it sure looks somewhat close to the original that I have in the background here, right? So I like the way that this one looked here and this one just looked a little bit too dull for me So of course I added in that vibrance in here Or you can see my settings right here. I also added in the levels as well So the way you would do that to a selected image only and not have to go down here Use your adjustments right wherever they are whatever, whichever one you use and then clip mask it to it You don't actually have to do that if you basically select on the photo itself, go to image adjustments. And then if you want to use a vibrance, you can. So for the background, look at this guy right here. If you switch it, you will be able to switch it. And also you will be able to go back on it as well. If that's a rasterized image, which it should be, if you had an image that was 4k resolution that I told you guys to put in to make sure you had that search option available for you guys when you actually search in Google. Right? So with that being said, I think we're finally good to go and like finally good to understand everything. So. Let's just like do a whole nother like transition because that was a lot, you know, and only wants to take a breath. <laughs> all right, homies, now I feel like I got all the little tips and tricks out of the way. Let's go ahead and actually get to the whole color correction part and really get a nice atmosphere going. So basically, we're going to start off with is a brightness and contrast. Now, the th I guess I'm going to say the brightness and contrast, the sort of like the whole little aspect of the little things we're going to be doing before the actual vibrance to make it look very nice and dull like this. There's going to be a lot of things that have to come into play before we get a really dope skin tone, a nice dramatic look to it. So guys, make sure you guys pay attention to making sure your brights get, of course, a lot more brighter, but not so aggressively bright, right? And also make sure your darks get darker. So I'm going to give you guys the exact settings I have in today's video. That way, if you guys want to, you know, kind of work with these pictures that I have in the description down below and then go back to then your original concept, then make sure you guys understand that, of course, colors are going to vary, right? These are black. We're working with black and red. So those are really cool combat colors. Maybe you're going to have less contrast, less brightness. So make Make sure you guys choose your own color corrections and stuff like that however if you guys want to as a reference i'm going to give you guys the exact same ones that i had in the video here today so first things first is actually the brightness and contrast right obviously so i went ahead and had a negative brightness and i put in a positive contrast as well so negative 19 for the brightness and then positive 19 for the actual contrast now the numbers themselves are not likely to sort of like of course combine and be the exact same on each side however just because it looked good this way i kind of stopped here so of course right away you can see that of course our background itself gets a little bit darker by the way just because i'm gonna show you guys my background color oops let's click on the actual background 
my backend code happens to be hex code 14171A. So if you guys type that in, you get the same exact backend code that I have as well. So, right as in contrast, right, as you can see, automatically you get these little nice little skin tone colors that makes, I guess, all of his darker colors look, our, our darker shades of his colors inside this picture look a little more darker. And those little highlights on his forehead, his arm, and whatnot just look a little bit more vibrant, right? They kind of stand out a lot more. So, that's the first thing I'm going to be doing is brightness and contrast. Second will be actually a black and white gradient. So, we're going to go ahead and go to gradient map. And we're going to click on this gradient map right around here to open up the actual gradient editor. So you guys should have a black and white preset for whatever reason you guys do not have a black and white preset click on the first knob here just double click on it very simply it's going to give you a color picker you can just make it black just like so press okay and then for the second one you just want to make it pure white as well press okay press okay again and then you guys have a nice little black and white gradient map so what comes now is going to throw this normal blend mode to multiply and you're going to automatically see what it does to the skin color the skin tone the just really cool the vibe you kind of get when you look at the actual skin or the picture itself and its whole looking just really really crisp and just really really dope so of course i'm not going to leave it on a hundred opacity because we're going to work with more color correction is going to be more darker and we're just kind of like thinking ahead so whatever reason whatever let's say i'm going to have my opacity i believe at 30 percent um it's at 45 percent i believe we'll say around there hmm we'll actually put a little higher so let's say 75 right not too bad, right? So whatever reason, if you have to go back, you guys can definitely go back and change around. But for now, those are the things that I had before. So 75 for the black and white contrast one. And now we're going to do is another black and white uh, gradient map here. Press OK. And then for this, however, though, we're actually going to choose to basically make everything else black and white besides, uh, I guess, no, excuse me, everything that's in the behind the original first little picture here, black and white. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this guy right here make sure his picture in the front is in full color full glory and the picture behind him which looks really really cool a nice dramatic little like black and white photo in the background so the way we're going to edit this is we're going to use the eraser if you guys want to for now where we'll use the eraser and we're going to go ahead and click on the actual little layer mask here right so what i said before if you use the eraser it's black for a i think a fill-in right black for fill-in Yep, black for fill and white for the eraser for the if you're using an eraser, but if you're using a brush, it's just opposite. So we're gonna take this white eraser here, color it in just like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of do this in a way that I'm gonna like how I did it before, right? So what I ended up doing was I'm clicking on these little black spots. See how this is very, very black in the background here? I'm just gonna click a little bit around there first to try to get like little nice little highlights almost like little black highlights in a way so it's not just one full tone of black we have multiple colors there as well because what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna make this very very simple for us we're actually gonna go ahead and go to the images right where our front images is right here we're gonna hold control and select the thumbnail layer mask of our pen tool and that way whatever's gonna be selected or whatever you're gonna be painted in is only gonna be painted in on this guy only right what's gonna be selected so if I click back on the layer mask over here for the gradient map and we're gonna use a white eraser gonna fill it in just simply color it in just like so and there you guys go very simply we made the thing in the background the person in the background there's all their image his other perspective black and white and the person in the front and his little front image is also in color now this little little mess up right here we're just going to simply take our eraser excuse me it should be black to fill in excuse me white to erase i want to actually erase it and just erase his arm there just so we don't have like a weird looking you know arm out of nowhere that's black and white right under his actual colored arm right so with that being said it looks really really cool so far as you can see and then just with that little bit of like really odd little lights in the background excuse me the little brush hits that we did to erase the background a little bit looks pretty cool little epic little kind of like almost like just it gives it that little better little touch right so excuse me after this little uh uh little little, little we're going to english right um a gradient map here we're going to use a s curve so for this s curve we're going to simply just make nice small adjustments just to make a nice little simple s which also will give us the option to give us like a nice little vibrant darker colors and then really vivid light colors as well very very simple it's a very simple s curve most of you guys should probably know with that being said as well we're going to add very very simple light effects now i'm not going to i did not go crazy with this in my previous videos i've done these i've done like really really crazy and very vibrant just very touchy light effects not this time however this is also i'm going to throw in my calves logo here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it behind the first image but below the second or excuse me below the first image but in front of the second image here so we have this right here and i'm gonna have to fix the gradient map here as well but i'm going to do the same thing as well control click on the actual logo itself right it'll select it for me i can take my gradient map and then just fill in the color again so just like that right nice 
Now, it's also in front of this back image here, but it's also behind this image here, which makes it look really cool. A nice little epic look, look to it, right? So, what we're going to do now is, like I said before, is add this little simple little uh, kind of like light fixtures, right? And we're going to go ahead and just select the, uh, I guess the red, you, I almost said brown, but it's almost basically brown. Nice little red tint here that we have for his little Cavs jersey here. So, what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're just going to click just like so right here and then once like right here and we're just going to add a very simple excuse me 10 yard blend mode from normal to linear dodge add lower opacity down just a little bit right i'll say right about there is very very good actually we're going to go with like 60 opacity linear dodge add looks pretty good now what i'm going to do next is actually going to be a exposure now if you guys don't know what exposure is of course it's going to kind of mess with your blacks mess with your whites as well so it's going to just basically do this to actually add almost highlights in a way as well so i'm gonna add exposure here for my exposure settings, I have them at 0 0.015. Oops, this should be on the middle one, right? 0 0.0125. And then for the gradient map, we have this at, what do we have this at? At one, actually, we had that at one. So what happens here is, what I reason why I did this, I'm gonna do this a little lower though. It doesn't have to be that crazy. Put that up just a little bit, maybe 0.85. Right. So what happens here is we're going to take this. We're going to take our eraser again or our brush, whatever we want to use to fill in our erase. We're going to make sure this guy is in full perspective, but also give ourselves nice little simple highlights here as well. Right. So you can see what's kind of happening here. I'm kind of just giving myself highlights with the exposure use like a use right here, which makes it look really cool because, of course, when things are black and white and you're changing the only the black and white levels with exposure, it's going to look almost like foggy in a way. And that's kind of what I went for when I had the exposure added. So if you can see if you look in this vicinity right here, you'll see that it kind of looks just a little, a little like a little foggy, but also looks really cool as well because you just erase very slightly, but make sure we erase all around where the actual person that's in color in or the picture that's in color in. Right. So with that being said, we can add in our vibrance as well. And for our vibrance right here, we have the setting on 18 and then 11. Now, this one here is just going to enhance our color just a little more. And we're going to actually throw this. Yeah, we'll throw it right there. Right. All right, cool. Now, right after right here, basically, we're almost almost done in a way. You can kind of see how it started to form right now. If you kind of just really quickly, let's just like hide all this right here. So you can see what the difference is in the color, the shading already. Right. So we're just going to click that again, as you can see. Right. We're going to add in, where is my smoke texture at? Where is that thing? Let's find that really quickly. All right, we found our smoke texture right here, right? Very cool, right? So a nice little smoke texture. I'll give this to you guys as well with the actual image of the actual two uh, or two kind of perspective I have for the LeBron James one. So with this little smoke texture, this is how we're going to actually have the nice little cloudy atmosphere going on here. So for this, we're actually going to get end up setting up a really cool exposure for the actual uh, smoke texture here, right? So what I'm going to do really quickly first, kind of like size it up. I'm going to kind of erase a little bit as well. Just start erasing a little bit. Kind of just erase a bit because we don't want too much smoke. We just want a nice little even amount. I'll try to change their perspective as well, like right here. Kind of have that right over there. Let's also have one like up here as well. Kind of, kind of maybe coming in right mm, like behind like this, right? Kind of looks like he's like smoking in the background there. Not smoking, but you know, looks all smoky and stuff. All right, have a nice little image here, right? Very simply, just kind of spread out the smoke a little bit. Looks pretty cool right now, very simple, right? You just let me use the eraser and kind of erase where I don't want too much. Now I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna group together these smoke images here with Control G on my keyboard. And also, if, I, if you guys did not know, if you hold Shift, when you click on the first image, and then whatever you click while you hold Shift in between will also get selected. That way you can actually group it very, very quickly. Very awesome, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my settings for the actual smoke by just adding this exposure to it. I'm gonna click on exposure. And I'm just gonna clippy mask this to the group itself because if you guys wanna merge the groups together, you're gonna lose the actual freedom of actually being able to move the uh, smoke images like so, right? If you needed to move them for whatever reason, right? So what's gonna happen here is for the exposure settings for the actual smoke change, we're gonna double click on this and they're pretty like 1.05, right? For that, for the offset, we're gonna go with 0 0.0333, right? And then for the gamma correction, we're gonna go to 0.56. Okay. Now, I might just change this up a little bit now. I think 0.33 works, honestly. Right, so you can see, it just looks, make it look a little less, look, a little less, a little less sort of like one-toned color. We have a lot of more black in here as well. So what I end up doing again 
I'm gonna go back into these a little bit and just start erasing just a little more, right? Just a little more, all right, with my eraser. That one's pretty good, okay. This just has a little bit too much, so I'm gonna go back in here, just erase this over here, just erase that a little bit as well, just like so. I think we have a pretty good look to it now. Where it's not too much, like too overpowering, not like the smoke has just one color in it. It has more than sort of like more than one layer to it as well. That's kind of what we want. We want that really cool looking atmosphere. And I think it looks pretty good just like so. And then with that being said, we're going to add in our vibrance here that actually ends up lowering the uh, kind of color exposure that we have going on here. So for the vibrance for this, we're going to put it on 13. And then for the saturation, we're going to put at negative 52. Now, if you guys know what saturation is, that's, of course, the, uh, the amount of color that's being like kind of put through the actual image. We're going to lower that down a little bit. However, without these things here, like I said before, right, it kind of looks very, very whack, right? Lowering the actual sort of color to it does not look as good if you don't do these th three things I did in the beginning before, right? So it just completely changes it, completely changes the mood, and it just makes it look really, really freaking cool. Now, I might want to throw this a little higher this time since we have the color in here now. A little less you know i guess there kind of put that little light fixture up a little bit put them at maybe 80 percent and we're also going to add a black and excuse me excuse me we're going to add a brightness and contrast again at 10 brightness and 30 contrast just like so to make those colors just pop just a little bit more now what i actually might have to do as well is go back to this exposure here right i might actually take my exposure put on white this time to actually fill it in right nope it's definitely black for the eraser Right, and we're going to go into spots maybe and kind of have the exposure be put around in some areas here. Right, what I'm also probably going to do is on this little vibrance here, that like right here, right, I'm going to take this, I'm going to actually race around a little bit where the Cavs logo is on his jersey. So that way that pops up a little bit, maybe have like the top of his face just a little bit, kind of uh, not so blurred. Or excuse me, not so dull, right? I kind of do this very loosely. So now it looks like the kind of the Cavs actual like jersey shirt, his actual like text here is popping out just a little bit more. All right, looks pretty good. Popping out as at like more than the actual you know rest of the picture. That way, kind of like get the point of that this is a Cavs team, of course, right? I'm also gonna take the Cavs logo up here and make that also pop out a little more as well. All right, I think that's pretty freaking good. I'll take this vibrance as well. Make sure that pops out. Right there. All right. Now it looks pretty good. You guys understand what's going on here a little bit, maybe a little more. And what's going to happen here now, I believe we're going to finish off with a levels here. So I'm going to take my levels. And for this, my setting was at 9. Then we had a 1.14 for the middle and a 245 for the end here which is kind of like what it did for me was you can see this it gets really really dark in some spots here so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on that layer mask i'm gonna click on my brush i'm gonna use a white brush excuse me a black one to erase and we're gonna simply just get rid of those really really dark spots there and also go in here kind of just fiddle around a little bit to kind of find some really cool spots to like leave that exposure in or leave those levels in. It's kind of like almost like a, a uh, an upper little brightness and contrast method as well. Um, that looks pretty good like that. Okay, I'm down for that. Now, last but not least, really, what's gonna happen here is a nice little simple trick that I actually learned from uh, Aaron, if you guys know who that is, uh, Big E. If you select everything, right, that you guys ever did in this entire uh, little uh, document, right, so the background included, so Control J, Control E, Control J will actually make a duplicate and Control E will merge it all together. If I go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and then I go to Paint Dubs or whatever I believe it's called, and you change your brush size to one and your sharpness to one, you press OK, you get this really, really nice, epic, sort of clean, sharpen kind of filter as well. So if you guys, I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys. You can look, look at anywhere, basically. And you'll see that it really, really sharpens the actual background, sharpens the image. It makes it look really, really freaking cool. And then not, I guess, not for nothing, I'll just basically maybe add in just a little more, like, light there. Right? A little more light right there so you kind of get this really really dope nice sort of epic look to it it looks pretty much identical to the original as well however a little less sort of blacks going on here so that's going to basically mean i'm going to have to go back in 
find some areas where I feel like I need like my levels to get changed and erase some things around. However, this is basically the concept itself. And I really do hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. It's been like, I know the like, dude today has been just like an off day for me. I had an incredibly terrible headache. So I do apologize if my video is a little off today. However, I know you guys will like this video here today uh, because you guys are just freaking, yeah, I do get like emails actually as well requesting that I do more of those like, like little player like cards as well. However, I just went with it. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to do it today. And then if you guys got a really good response, why not just keep doing it? I'm doing them once in a while, right? So, however, this is actually going to be the last tutorial of the year. Um, because of course my next video for next week is going to be a top five sort of video i always do at the end of the like sort of the the last video day month i guess you would say right where i put this little top five of my favorite videos together in like a different format so i think i'm gonna do top five pre-made uh designs like pre-made graphic designs um as in banner form right so if you guys have any banner uh, tutorials that you guys don't have a secret download for because i might have lost a file let me know i might do it over again for you guys so that way you guys can have a nice cool clean concept that's also pretty much relevant and new a little newer i guess you'd say to the concept that i had previously right because it's going to be you know a year in advance right so or a year or a year previously right so i'm done here today homie's throat is killing me i am incredibly tired but that's not stopping me from making that sure the video is uploaded and all that good stuff so hope you guys do enjoy the concept here today and I'm gonna, i love i really really do love the the care i took in the actual preview version so make sure you guys understand you need to go back to your color corrections tune things around delete some things erase some things but it's really easy to do when you actually do have that layer mask selected and also it's really easy just to use your black and white brush and then erase you know fill in if you guys need to so with that being said thank you guys so very much for watching today's video thank you guys so very much for the support on all the videos that i have done in the year and i can't wait till next year and i might actually have a cool little giveaway going on after the actual sale so basically i think friday whenever you're watching this video this next friday is actually the sale for the everything pack so i believe it's going to be on boom right 29th so the 29th to about no the 22nd sorry 22nd to about the 26th i think i'm gonna have the everything pack sale for it's gonna be for 20 dollars because i want to save for that now definitely about to be, should probably do so anyway i'll tell you guys later Cisco hq out don't forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later your boy's tired your boy's tired <laughs>